Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to learn a new feature that's been p implemented into Blender and it's kind of cool so I'm going to uh, share this quick little snippet of uh, cool feature. So I'm just going to hurry, it's called the depth of field uh, preview in the render or in the viewport which is really cool so I'm going to go to add modifier we're going to make a whole bunch of cubes so you can see what this does. So I'm going to add two arrays uh, one I'm going to take off and add two. I'm going to put a two there and I'm going to change this into two but I'm going to make that negative two I think yeah so it goes out in front and I'm going to increase that quite a few maybe twenty just put it there twenty so now I have a whole bunch of cubes right okay yeah that works now go back into your camera view hitting zero on your numpad right click on this uh, rectangle on the outside and hit G now if you middle mouse button and move up, it'll zoom. Uh, or it actually won't zoom, it's moving the camera closer to uh, just moving it forward. So move it pretty close to this cube and hit R for rotate. Hit it twice though. And you can uh, track ball is what this is called in Blender. And uh, then hit R again for just rotating it on one axis. Uh, rotate it hit G to move it, G with the uh, middle mouse button, move it on the axis a little bit closer, and I'm going to move it, I'm just going to get this positioned a little bit, use all these functions that I just told you, I want to be able to see all these boxes, but I don't want to see all of them way well, I just want to see pretty much this one box and then all the rest of them and a whole bunch of small boxes. So I put this in pretty close. And I actually I put this row and this row out of view so that if it happened to come into the camera it worked out fine. So you wouldn't have to but that was just the way I did it. Uh, I'm still selected the camera so I still have this orange box around it and if you don't just right click on it you'll be good. Uh, come into the viewport options and if they're not open if it looks like this it may look like this. If you have T, it'll open up this side, and N will open up this side. Scroll to the bottom, and uh, there's a shading option, and it might be closed. Just click on it, it'll open it, and hit depth of field. Everything turns blurry. That's <laughs> not exactly what you wanted, right? And it depends on what version of Blender you're using. I'm using 2.75. If you're using 2.74, uh, then you won't have this high quality option when you go into the the camera options and you still got this right clicked on so if you don't this won't show up so just make sure you do hit the camera options and uh, this won't be here but there will be another option don't remember what it's called but that's okay too so just go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you this because it's kind of weird but I'm going to change the aperture from radius to f-stop and this is because it's a camera term and it's easier to know what that means uh, f-stop is the same thing as radius but it's a different number it represents a different amount of opening on a camera so you gotta think about this in a camera sense uh, cameras have uh, aperture and what that means is is the opening of the lens so and I don't know if you've ever seen, I just hurried and googled uh, aperture real quick. I don't know if you've ever seen a lens, but this this picture right here represents aperture actually pretty well. So you see right here, this is f-stop of 1.4, and you have a really uh, wide opening. This goes pretty wide. But if you have f-stop of 1, uh, or uh, 16, then it's really small and that's how much light is able to enter the camera and it's really surprising because it doesn't affect the size of your uh, image it's just how much light is able to enter and that uh, I'm not gonna go into the physics behind it because it's really kinda cool but I don't have time for it to take all day uh, but just make sure that the lower the number the bigger the opening and that means that the bigger the opening the blurrier the image is going to be that's not in focus. So you'll have one part that's in focus and the rest of it's really blurry. But if you have 
like this, f f one uh, sixteen, everything is going to be in focus, or near everything is going to be in focus. So that's a little bit of a camera background. So go ahead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put this. I'm gonna leave that there for now, and everything's blurry in here. So if you increase this distance, it'll change that. The further the distance, really, the clearer it gets. But that's not how depth of field works. So we're going to change this. Uh, for the viewport, I'm going to I'm going to increase this, or I'm going to decrease the number of the aperture. I'm going to put 2.2 because that's that's actually a pretty decent close. Actually, I'm going to just lower it to 0.1 because I think Blender has a little bit different aperture setting, or I think the the distance is a little bit skewed. So I'm just going to put that at 0.1. I think that's actually a really good close-up. Uh, point two, uh, point two. That's where it's going to be. Point two is a good close-up uh, depth of field ratio. So I'm going to put that at point two. And it's really weird because you saw as I changed that, it really didn't do anything in here. And that's because we haven't changed it in the viewport. And this says s stop of 128. That is unheard of. Like that just doesn't happen. So uh, the reason why I don't know why it even has that because we always want to hit this high quality and change this number to be the same number as that so I'm going to put point 0.2 and now it becomes this same number and, and now everything's in, uh, out of focus and that's because you, your distance is way too close uh, for me at least it should be around and the higher you get that number stuff will start coming into focus and I'm I'm gonna set it to 8 right now and I'm gonna show you this really cool trick here in a minute but you can see it's kinda focused on that cube right there but everything else is blurred at point 2 and just another uh, camera as the further you get out this stuff will get blurry but it doesn't blur near as much in the front as it does in the back so if you bring this uh, focus closer up on like the square right here that will get way blurrier than if I were to focus clear out on that and it's still blurry but it's just uh, little tips and tricks if you're wanting to get real realistic renders so so we change this to be the same number as that with a high quality setting now if we hit W while our mouse is over here in the viewport this is the really cool thing if you hit depth of field distance pick now you get this little eyedropper. If I want to focus out here on this cube out here, I click, and boom, it's focused. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And so if I, you can do it continuously. If I want to focus right here, it's focused. If I want to focus there, it's focused. And there's this also, this is cool feature with it. You can actually drag it, and it doesn't. There's something not 100% right. I think it's still being developed. But you can see if I drag it up here, it doesn't actually focus up there until if I if I move it left and right and I wait a while, it eventually gets there. It's almost like there's some kind of a slow uh processing time or something with it. But so if you want to I would just hit do the click and just click where you want it to go. Because uh, that works pretty well. So that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. Have fun playing with your depth of field and learning a little bit more about that. We'll see ya.